welcome back, it's Annette from Cotto Verdi and today we're sewing anemone corns. Yesterday I put these anemone corns into soak, all of these anemones. Don't forget your labels by the way. Um, the ones without labels are a whole mixture of the ones that I had from last year. So I dug these out of the pots they were in where they flowered beautifully and I stored them in the garage over winter in a net bag and then I soaked them yesterday. So they've been soaking for nearly 24 hours. You do not want them to get squishy. If an anemone corn goes squishy, you'll know because it's all disgusting, like a liquid inside, it's really gross. Um, so don't over soak your anemone corns. Keep checking that they are firm. Um, it's better to under soak than over soak. You can plant an anemone corn without actually soaking it, but soaking it is hugely beneficial. Certainly it gets it going faster and also it will more or less guarantee that your plant will grow. Whereas if you just plunked this thing in the ground, there's no guarantee it would get enough water to revitalize it and therefore grow. A lot of anemone corns are this shape where there's a definite point downwards and where you can see last year's stem. So they go into trays this way, but quite a lot of them are just random shapes. Um, if you look closely, if I put my glasses on, you can kind of see where last year's growth happened. And so you know to put it this way. So this one, you might not be able to tell which way is up and which way is down. But actually, I think this is last year's top. And so I will plant it this way up. And again, I mean, who's to say, but actually I can see little roots coming up here. And this looks like this is where it grew last year. So you know what, if you plant it the wrong way up, it doesn't matter because nature is a wonderful thing and they will find their way up, I promise you. So you make a little hole in your compost, plunk it in and cover it up. Plunk it in and cover it up. And it's literally as simple as this. If you wanted to, you could pre-sprout your anemones in the same way I pre-sprouted my ranunculus. So do look at that video if you'd like to see how to do that. really want to emphasize that you don't have to panic if you can't find the right way up with your anemones because the shoots will find their way to the light and the roots will always go downwards. So whilst it's preferable to plant them the right way because you'll get shoots sooner, your shoots will find their way up. Plants are amazing. <laughs> These are black and whites that I'm sowing here and they go pointy side down, little root stump up. And I'm just gonna push them in, simple as that. What I'd really like to tell you about the anemones is that they're exactly like the ranunculus and they are like caviar to all the squirrels and rodents in your garden. So cover them. If you're going to put them anywhere where you think uh, squirrels or mice or anything like that can get to them. So put one of those plastic covers on them so, uh, so critters can't get in and eat them because I have lost an entire crop by not doing that in my first year. I had no idea that they'd come along and eat them all. So <laughs> with Baloo's head in the frame, I just wanted to say that don't be expecting your anemones to, to start rooting and shooting at exactly the same speed that the ranunculus do because they are much slower to get started, but they definitely catch up. If anything, I had anemones before ranunculus last year in the garden, even though I planted them at exactly the same time. They just seem to sort of sit there for a bit and sulk and then they go, oh, all right, I'll grow. So just wait, be patient. 
do not let them dry out but also please don't overwater them don't let them sit in water don't overwater them they will not like it and they will start rotting and go soft and squishy and slimy and just disappointing because you can't save it once it's gone soggy you'll never get it back this is very wet compost and they have been soaking so i'm actually not going to water these today i'm going to keep a very close eye on them and if they look at all dry i will water them again but i don't want this compost to be any wetter than it already is so definitely don't want to overwater them and what i'm going to do with the anemones is keep them cool just like the ranunculus so for the moment they don't need any light so i'm just going to put them on the floor in the storeroom but then as soon as i see shoots i shall turn the lights on they are not going on heat mats you can put them in your greenhouse if it's unheated but just like the ranunculus don't bask them in some sort of you know sunny paradise they don't want to be 20 25 degrees they won't like it anyway so i'm not going to water these in i'm just going to put them in the storeroom i'm going to carry on sewing the rest of these in exactly the same way into trays like this so i just want to say thank you so much for joining me today as i sew my anemone corns and if you've enjoyed this video and found it useful then do subscribe to my channel and thank you so much for watching i'll see you all next time because actually you can plant an anemone corn without an anemone corn, an anemone corn. I feel like I'm saying a tongue twister. No, sweetheart, don't, don't climb on there. <laughs> don't climb on there. You want to smell the soil? <laughs> He's so curious and so cute. I love him so much. This compost. What I really want to tell you about the anemones is they're exactly like, like the ranunculus. Tongue twister. So many tongue twisters today. Mm -hmm.